Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Faith Positive Nation, you know, we all struggle with how to get everything done. You know, we want to be productive. You have to do more with less these days. And so that's really a challenge. But today's guest is speaking to you and to me about something very near and dear to my heart. And that is, okay, we want to get more done with less, right? But how do you do what matters? I mean, what really matters? If you've read my bestseller that I read along with Mike Van Brank and Faith Positive in a Negative World, you know when we get to the Achieve Core practice and we're talking about productivity, I tell you this story where I was standing in uh, Mississippi around the grave of a nephew who had passed, and I was watching them toss the dirt in as we stood there with, um, with my wife's family. And it was a, a very poignant moment, one etched in my memory forever. Well, he was very young. He was very young. He took his own life. And as I stood there, I watched butterfly, uh, excuse me, dragonflies flying around the gravesite. And I immediately began thinking to myself, dragonflies are so beautiful, iridescent wings and what have you. And then I remembered, dragonflies only live 30 days. Mm. And so if you do our seven weeks to faith positive coaching program, you discover that in there, we prompt you to put together your dragonfly list. In other words, what are those things that really matter to you that you want to make sure that you get done? Well, today's guest faith positive nation has taken the dragonfly list to a whole new level <laughs> and has a miraculous system that she's going to tell us all about today. And then of course you can reach out to her after this podcast. Today's guest is Teresa McCloy and she invites you to join her. She's a recovering workaholic to, in, to join her in her mission so that you stop trying to be productive and so that you actually do what matters. So faith positive nation, help me welcome to the podcast today, Teresa McCloy, Teresa, welcome. Thank you so much, Jody. It is great to be here. And that dragonfly story is perfect. Absolutely mm -hmm. perfect story in this idea of doing what matters. Yeah, because it really rivets your attention to the fact that you don't have, well, life is fragile, first of all. Absolutely. And that, uh, and, and I know you've had some experiences with the fragility of life yourself. Yes, we have. I mean, and I'll just share with your listeners, we just recently lost our son, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in a struggle of addiction. And so mm -hmm. that became a part of our story as we walked with him uh, as a family and me as an individual. I was in full-time ministry and really had to make some changes and some shifts as uh, we began to be a family who was walking with our son uh, in addiction. And unfortunately, we have lost that battle uh, with him as he uh, passed away several weeks ago. But we just know that there's still a message of hope that comes. I love the dragonfly story mm. for that reason. Um, our son's life, even though it was a struggle, has uh, meaning and purpose. And mm. God had a purpose for him yes. and how his life will continue uh, with the story of hope for those families and for those people that still walk in that place of uh, that struggle of addiction. Absolutely, because hope is what we have as Christians, right? Whether Absolutely. it's at work or at home or that unique intersection between the two, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, hope is what we find in Christ. So tell me a little bit more about Eric's legacy and how that's communicated hope to you and how that impacts your work and helping people do what matters. Well, when um, Eric actually came to us about um, six to seven years ago and shared with us that this addiction struggle had basically mm. overtaken his life, mm. I really had to start my own journey, as did my husband, in our own recovery of sense as to um, what we were doing. I was full-time ministry. My husband is a farmer and so that's a pretty uh that's workaholic full -time, full -time. <laughs> workaholic culture as well yeah. mm -hmm. and not that we felt like that that had um contributed to eric's choices as an addict but yet um i always used to tell eric that 
your gift to me has been to do my own work in my personal walk uh, with God and my faith journey. And uh, so I began kind of a journey of discovery of was I just doing faith, doing church, uh, mm. doing a lot of teaching, doing a lot of leading, but was it personal? Was it my story? Mm. 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 And was yeah. I working on the things that really mattered to me? Um, even though I was in ministry, I was doing God's work. Um, you know how that is. Yeah, yeah I think I've read about that. Um, yeah. And, and, and we all have that sense of doing God's work, particularly in Faith Positive Nation, because we see our work as worship. But mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is, until we transition from an inherited faith to an owned faith, mm -hmm. it's just not personal. And, right. and so we're just going through the motions. So I guess what you're talking about is the difference between it sounds like to me anyway, trying to be productive versus doing what matters. So help yes. us understand a little bit about, because you were productive, but were Very. you doing what matters? And so that's part of Eric's legacy. Help us understand the difference between the two. Well, productivity, I really think, you know, you can, as I say, you know, you can download all the latest apps. You can get all the gadgets, <laughs> all the software. There's a new one that comes out every day. Yeah, you spend and, all your time being yeah. productive with productivity software, right? Yes, and so you can, and I am very productive, I think, in terms of systems and processes. Mm -hmm. I loved that in the space that I worked in as a creative arts minister. I built a wonderful team of musicians and vocalists and had all the systems down pat for how we did all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's very productive. That's who I've been in every entrepreneurial space. I've owned my own businesses, all of that before I was in ministry. But sometimes when, you know, you really look at the calendar and you look over a quarter um, period of time and you go, where was I spending time in relationships? Where was I really investing in the things that mattered to me? One thing I love to do, and I'll use this as an example, I love to travel. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a season of my life where I can do a little bit more of that. Right. But I wasn't seeing it in my calendar. I wasn't seeing that priority right. of the things that I really want to do showing up in my calendar. So how I like to work with people as a coach, as we do masterminds together, is really helping people to see those values, those things that God has gifted them in, the things that they want to give back. Those mm. go in first. Mm. And then mm. we can learn the methods and the systems of productivity and time management and how we do and execute the tasks that have to do with those things. But if we're just kind of doing things that are productive because it sounds good, we should answer emails every day, we should do this every day, <laughs> that can get us really out of whack with what God created us to do mm. and the work that he's given us and the relationships that we're supposed to be in. Mm. It's so easy to fill uh, what I think are the two most significant indicators of who we are, our calendar and our checkbook register. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Or our online checkbook register, right? It's mm -hmm. very easy to fill those two things with what other people tell us they should be filled with. Yes. Whether it's work or family, you know, you ought to be doing this. We hired you to do this, those kinds of things. How do you make that shift from, uh, I guess what Bob Buford would refer to as success to significance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from productivity to what really matters. How do you make that shift, Teresa? I think for a lot of uh, people is it does take time. I mean, you know, you're not going to do it overnight. <laughs> oh, really? For, yeah, I'm spending I'm sorry. more of my time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think there's two key things that I found. It's uh, either being in accountability or um, community with others. So I use okay. mastermind groups quite a bit for that accountability piece. So it is verbally sharing with other people once you've identified what those things are that matters to you. Mm. If somebody's actually asking you on a regular basis, you know, did you go on a date night this week? Did you, you know, did you put into, you know, time with your spouse? What about when's the last time you saw your adult kids? Um, you know, have you taken that vacation? Um, you know, have you worked in that ministry field that you want to donate time to your church? And that piece to me is, is huge. Um, yeah, There's a but, saying, you know, the thing that hurt us the most is people, but the thing we need the most is people, yeah, the relationships, really. you know. And so we have to be in relationships with others and have that accountability piece. I think that's huge. Mm. Well, let me and, ask you a question about that. Because yeah, sure. All the things that you just named are stuff that winds up or activities that wind up being left over. Mm -hmm. 
so often with so many people that I work with, you know, those are things I want to do. And if I have any time left over, then I'll mm -hmm. get to those. I'll yeah. get to date night. I'll get to travel. I'll get to talking to my grown up kid. I mean, playing in my head right now is cats in the cradle by, by, uh, yes. Ch Harry Chavis, Lots right? of good songs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really. So I'm thinking to myself, wow. So how do I make that shift? Accountability is a key piece, but I got to make sure I'm around those people who are going to mm -hmm. love me enough to, to call me on it and to say, yes. okay, last time we were together, you spent 15 minutes talking about how you want to start doing date mm -hmm. night with your spouse and you haven't done one. Why? You yeah. Know, how do I, how do I get into an accountability group like that? Well, I mean, there's lots of places to find them. Those, that's one of the things that I do in my coaching programs is I have those accountability groups. I actually run uh, some groups that last about 13 weeks. Okay. And so I use a program. It's called the 12-week year. That program teaches us and helps us walk together in those steps of, and we've all heard it before, Stephen Covey probably channeled it or whatever is yeah. putting in the big rocks first. Sure. How sure. do I put in the big rocks and keep those appointments with myself? So we make that kind of calendar. We learn how to manage our time. We start with what do you value? We mm. have some methods that we kind of figure that out. You know, what do I value? Um, thinking about what do I want the end of my life to look like? Mm. And once we've discovered some of those things, that's where the accountability piece comes in. Okay. And now we've got some methods and tools, how we're going to put it in. And I tell people it takes longer than 13 weeks, but that's a really good start. Mm -hmm. And so if you get one of your values in, in that 13 weeks, and you develop one new place, mm. uh, you know, the most key thing. And then the next 13 weeks or 12 weeks, you do the second one. Hmm. And they start to become something, and I hate to use the addictive term, but I'm very familiar with addiction and recovery, that you crave it, you hmm. want it, and mm -hmm. your life can't be without it. Mm -hmm. um, because you've seen the now value. Now another song's running it. through my head, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> Country you're music song, music, right? You're a music guy, I guess. Yeah, well, I was in radio broadcasting. I mean, I got a oh. face for radio, right? So <laughs> I was in radio broadcasting. Now I know. Uh, one, uh, gotta have it. Yeah, okay, all right, I got it. Yeah, but you once, literally crave it once you yeah. accomplish that first value realignment with behavior, right. Right? right? And that's what we're really talking about is changing your behavior. Right, and, and I think that's where people get stuck. You know, we're always looking for the ideal plan, the new best thing that's going to come along to make us more productive, to make us do the things we want. And we forget that we didn't get here overnight. We didn't get this mm. out of alignment place overnight. Right. And we're not going to get back to it overnight. But if we can stay with it and create that community and accountability piece, it could be one person or it could be a couple of people. Mm -hmm. um, Different people have different ways that they like to do that. Yeah. But then putting in some type of, I call it an operating system, because that's really what we're doing. We're reprogramming. I'm a computer girl by heart. No. Back in the day when the computer was as big as the room. Um, <laughs> you had to have special you know? air conditioning units exactly. in there to keep it cool, right? That's yeah. how I grew up in computer programming. Really? Well, me too. Did you go back to key punch days with oh, the cards yeah. and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Punch now, I if did. you're a millennial, you have no idea what we're talking about. Just Google yeah. it. You'll see. Yeah. Exactly. It's probably um, my dad standing there at a card sorter yeah. in the picture on Wikipedia. Floppy like, disk in the whole nine yards. Oh, but, that, that uh, came later, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what we're doing. And sometimes we have to do that hard reset. And we mm. have to do that new operating system, um, a lot of prayer, a lot of thinking, uh, discernment with God about, mm. you know, where am I at in my life and what do I, what do I really want to do? Some of us might be at a stage with younger children. And so that's a place we have to look at grade school, junior high, how much time. And then some of us may be past that season in an empty nest. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a whole new world has opened up <laughs> that we have more time, you know, mm -hmm. good, bad, or ugly. We have mm -hmm. more time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what are we going to do with it? And what is God inviting us to? So I think people can think their values are once and done. Mm. And I really think there's more to it than that. I encourage people to do quarterly retreats, mm. yearly getaways, um, either with their spouse or even alone if that's needed, uh, to do some of this, you know, heart work is what I like to call it. Yeah, so. to everything there's a season, right? And a mm -hmm. purpose under everything under heaven. And I love the yeah. way you're talking about those different seasons. 
having experienced so much of that myself um, as our daughters have grown and gone. And so it's a wonderful mm -hmm. time. I know for me, just to give a personal example of what you're talking about, our younger daughter ran cross country and track. And so while my business was growing at that time, I had, I, I chose to turn down some significant opportunities mm -hmm. simply because I had about four years there to be the dad that was there. Right. Yes. And I got one job to do and that's to be the best daddy in the world for her. Right. Right. I mean, you, you can hire speakers that are great from all over the world. And, and you know, so why one person, well, that's my divine design. Mm -hmm. That's how God mm -hmm. put me together was to be her dad. So, mm -hmm issued the opportunities, got the track and the cross country schedule. And I was the lunatic running from point to point on the 5k <laughs> course, yeah. you know, yeah. encouraging yeah. her at the Hills and everything. But now she's a grown adult about to be married. And so we tell stories about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, had a conversation with our older daughter just this week, remembering when dad would pick her up from school on Fridays, right? We go get milkshakes and French fries and sit and dip and eat and then go, to the library. I mean, those yeah. are the kinds of things that I think you're talking about. Absolutely. Which, and those wind up typically, Therese, at least for most of us, in the leftover category. Yes, they do. So what you're talking about is a process whereby I slow down to speed up. Yes. I slow down long enough to discern God's call, God's divine design and calling on my life, those relationships that are primary, and then to adjust my schedule accordingly. Well, and, you know, just going back to the story that I was sharing about our son and his mm. struggles, and, you know, I, I don't know how God processes all this. I'm not, I'm not in his space, yeah, but really. if we don't slow down, mm. we will be forced to slow down. Oof. And so for Oof. me, whether it's illness, whether it's tragedy, whatever it is, Mm. You know, we get to that wall. There's a book called The Critical Journey. It's mm. one of my favorite books that we come to and we come to this, this wall and, and we have to make a choice. Are we going to push through and figure some different things out or are we going to go back and do the whole, the whole cycle over again? Oh, man, yeah. And That's the Old Testament story of Israel, right? Get, yes. Get delivered, then they go right back into sin and then judgment yes. and needing to be delivered again. So we get choices when we come to those wall, wall seasons in our life that God gives mm. us. And that's why, you know, five years ago, I started making the choice of I have to do life differently. This just isn't about my son's recovery. Mm. This is about my recovery as well. And so mm. I had to really lean into some spiritual discipline, some spiritual formation work to mm. really get back to my personal self. Or I could not mentally, emotionally survive um, watching him walk through the struggles that he was because this is your son yeah. and the disease of addiction is a terminal illness. It mm. really is. And so, um, you know, for my husband and I and for our daughter to watch him walk through that, we just had to start doing some things differently. Yeah. To care and for so yourself I, in the midst of Eric's yes, journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and to continue to lean into that hope that mm. God had and, um, and to do that well, I really felt like I had to step away. And this is, you know, as I coached with people, many times there come some really critical decisions that yeah. you decide to make. And so for me, it was stepping away from full-time ministry mm. and opening a door and saying, I don't know what's next, but <laughs> I know you have something for me and I yeah. know it fits better right now than what I was doing. Right. Oh, wow. I'm laughing because on my dresser in my bedroom, I have written on a note card and red pen. God, I don't know exactly what's going to happen today. And I trust you to love me through it. Yes. Because what you're, exactly. what you're really talking about is Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. And of course, the, the rest of that verse, which is in the Joey version, <laughs> is, yeah. and you're not. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. that, that's who the struggle is. And it's a real struggle is between me trusting myself more than I trust the Almighty. Yes. One of the phrases that I use uh, when Eric was at some of his worst times in his addiction was, God, I know that you love him more than I do. Oh. And so Man, I had to huge. let go of the control mm. because 
a good enabler like myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one of my recovery work. <laughs> oh, I know that one well. Yeah. <laughs> would want to control his life for him and make yeah. all his choices and make all his appointments and yeah. help yeah. him live his life even at 30. Yeah. And Come so, here, let me fix this for you, Eric. Yes. And it's I'm, from a loving place, but it's not yours to be in that place. So I remember, you know, the moment that God said, I love him more than you do. I've got this. And that's what, what was I your really, rea- What was your reaction, <laughs> Teresa, when God well, said, I know you where you are, but, but I've got this, okay? Because, I mean, um, really, he's saying, hey, Teresa, you're not God. I, I love him more than I do. And, yes. by the way, he was mine first. Yes. And, mm. and I didn't share that part of the story. Our son, both of our children are adopted. So this was actually oh, a true, a true gift from God. Shoo. And so, um, when he tells mm. me that I'm not real happy. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, it's God and he can handle it, right? Yeah. He'll love you anyway. <laughs> um, I'm, oh, I'm a little bit word. of a control freak. So yeah. to tell me that the gift you've given me to raise, to have under my care, um, mm. is now not something that I can control and, um, that we are, and this ties into the story a little bit of this really deciding what matters mm. would have been, Eric would have been the fourth generation on the family farm and so had been raised to be the farmer. And so for my husband and myself to even grieve that loss mm. of asking him to leave the farm, to not be here, to give that up, um, but that has become our story of how do you love someone well and let God love them mm. and, and, and step away um, because it's, it's our, our choice to be who we are yes. and to be in relationship with God. And that is so hard with our children. Mm. So part of the do what matter for me is even mm. in some ways, Joey, uh, live your own life. Mm. Like don't try to live – and we do a lot of that in our in our oh, culture dude. of yeah. with the image driven stuff in technology and Facebook sure. and all the things sure. we're trying to live somebody else's life. So mm. the calling is for me to do what matters that God and I are doing together. Yeah, and, yeah, it's your personal calling because I mean they're only what seven and little or seven billion people on the face <laughs> yeah, of the planet. That's yeah. all, and yeah, each one is few. unique, and there's the divine the, the divine design and the unique calling for each of us. So, you know, everybody else is already taken. Yes. Go figure out who you are as a child of God and live that at work, at home, and all these other places that matter. But all, if I'm catching your message correctly, I think I'm all in relationships. Yes, yes. Uh, For me, that's been the hugest thing. And I say that relationship part um, is a lot of what my business is built on. I'm a relational person, Mm -hmm. but yet I love to connect people together and introduce people to each other and how can you work together? How can God use you together? So I love the mastermind concept. Mm. I do a lot of that because it's so fun to see people come together and learn together, Mm. walk together, uh, help, you know, that iron sharpens iron piece uh, that we can use together. And um, so that, that's a lot of the work that I do is in that mastermind uh, concept as well. And then teaching people a new way of putting that operating system underneath once yeah. they discover with God what their, what their values really are. Sure. And the new OS is really the easy part if I'm, if I'm catching on to what you're saying here. Uh, the new OS is easy because you've already done the hard work, you know, which yes. is chipping through the concrete of the, the outer veneer that you have and really getting yeah. inside yourself to discover what's important. So it's not easy work. It's not for everybody, as I say. <laughs> Takes a um, jackhammer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what can be brought anew and mm. what can God cre- create for the future? Mm-hmm. Um, then every time you do it, every kind of time that you kind of reset and look at a new 12-week year, which is the system sure. that I use, or that sure. you go on a retreat and you reset, it does become easier. And it becomes more fulfilling and you're not having to go way back and reconnect. Sure. You're just setting some goals and some plans towards sure. what you're, you're just, doing in this season. Right. You're re-upping really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. God, we, yeah. we did that. Now what's next, right? What's you, next? Yeah. You've mentioned the 12 week year a few times. Can you tell us briefly more about that? Cause it sounds absolutely intriguing. 
It is an intriguing concept, and I was only introduced to it a couple of years ago. Uh, it is actually a book called The 12 Week Year, which is by, written by uh, Brian Moran and Mike Lennington. It's been on the New York Times bestselling list for a long time, and it would probably fall into the productivity category, but what I loved about it, it's not anything new under the sun, except for the concept of instead of 12-month planning, we're only looking at 12 weeks at a time. And we're, con we're considering that to be like a year. And so we're only thinking out in about three months at a time, a okay. uh, lot shorter, which for me, I'm a little ADHD. So, you know, if, <laughs> I work. Say, if I say in January, I'll put it off till October before I really get there. Uh -huh. um, but it's nothing new under the sun. It's just the concept of... Of, of combining it down a little bit tighter so that we can spend some more time uh, in a execute better. It really helps us to execute uh, a little bit quicker. A lot of people think, oh, now I got to take my 12 month and put it into 12 weeks. No, we may only be working on one particular thing during that 12 weeks, one project, one goal that, uh, that God's kind of said, this is the time I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. So nothing new under the sun except for that concept of that uh, condensed version. Well, you remind me of what my friend Dr. Ivan Meisner talks about. He and his wife Beth have this conversation all the time because she likes to do a lot of things at once and keep a lot of plates spinning. And Ivan says it's better uh, to do six things a thousand times than to try to do a thousand things six times. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. So that speaks exactly what you're talking about. And I can remember back in the days of being a consultant, you know, you talk about long range planning, three to five years. And then we started working it down to annual planning. But I love in this, in this attention deficit world that now we're talking about, let's yes. look at the next quarter mm -hmm. because that implies easier accountability, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Cause I'm not overwhelmed and mm -hmm. easier action. Cause I got this one thing I'm going to do over the next three mm -hmm. months, right? This one yeah. big rock. Yeah we, term. yeah, we really teach people to choose two to three things, maybe two business goals that you're going to work on and one personal goal. Mm. And um, those come from those values. Those yeah. come from those, these are what matter places. Um, you know, a lot of times, whether it's coaching or consulting or whatever, people come with this, I'm overwhelmed and I'm whatever. Oh, absolutely. But really, what they need is to step back a little bit most of the time but they want to solve it really quick. And so <laughs> the 12 week year can be something that's a new operating system that you can mm. work in that can help you really make some significant changes pretty quickly. And we all like results. It comes from the yeah. athletic world. It mm -hmm. really does. The concept comes from the Olympic athletes who would work really hard in isolated chunks on a certain part of their training. Mm. And that's where the 12 week year concept comes from. Mm, that's absolutely beautiful. Wow. Mm. Well, you've given me so much to think about today and I'm sure you have faith positive <laughs> nation as well. And I absolutely love it. And can I just thank you for sharing your story about Eric? You're uh, more than welcome. Thank you for allowing me to. Yeah. Your transparency is just so freeing and the fact that you can talk about it and it's so fresh really gives me a lot of hope that yeah. as Dr. Peel used to say, within every adversity lies the seeds of opportunity. And, and that's, that's what I hear. And so know that our prayers are with you and your husband and your daughter. Thank um, you. Wow. So Faith Positive Nation always wants to know about a favorite Bible verse from our guest. Have you got well, one favorite Bible verse? I do. And it, a lot of people have this verse. It's the Jeremiah 29 11 passage, mm -hmm. but but um, my favorite <laughs> part of that is, is actually to go clear through verse 14. Oh, sweet. Because well, tell us about verse, it. Well, in verse 14, it talks about how he'll gather the nations back together. Uh -huh. And one of my favorite words is the word remember. Because mm -hmm. if you divide it up, it's re, re and remember. remember. Yes. And so part of the work that I love to do with people is getting them to remember the things mm. they love, the values that they have, oh. what their, what their vision of life was. Mm. Let's go back and let's remember that. And I think that scripture mm. says, I know the plan. I love a good plan. <laughs> I know the plan I have for you to prosper for a plan for a future. But then he goes on to say, if you'll seek me, you'll find me, you know, and then I will remember you. I'll put the nations back together. Mm. And I just think that's so hopeful when you read yes. that whole passage like that. 
Yeah, especially when it seems like everything's torn apart. And by nations, we're really talking about relationships there, right? Yeah, yeah. And they all seem so yeah. torn apart. I love Dr. Peterson's, the message translation of that yes. particular verse where he talks I about. I have that, yeah. Yeah, I know what I'm doing is what God is saying. Yeah, <laughs> like, hello. I think I know what I'm doing, but he really knows what he's doing, right? Well, that's what he told me. You know, yeah. I, I love him more than you do. I know what I'm doing. Wow, that's so poignant. I will remember that for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, being you. the dad of two daughters, I will remember that for yeah. a very, very long time. Yeah. Teresa, somebody in Faith Positive Nation is going to want to reach out to you. And I know you have a special gift for Faith Positive Nation. So tell us about how they can reach out to I you and get do. that special gift. I do. Well, they can go to my website, which is TeresaMcCloy.com. So T-E-R-E-S-A-M-C-C-L-O-Y.com and then forward slash Faith Positive. And what I have for them there is uh, a free resource that I've written about adding rituals into your day. What do you do first mm. thing in the morning? What do you do in the evening? How that really helps you to make better decisions. I love rituals because there's times we just, to put our brain on autopilot and get the richness and the goodness of, of those times together with God are a great thing. So mm, got true. that for you and a few other things right. as well. So check it out. Wonderful. Teresa McCloy.com and Teresa McCloy.com slash faith positive. And if you're walking the dog uh, and don't have a free hand, <laughs> it's in the episode copy on yeah. our website on Teresa's page, as well as in iTunes and Stitcher and other places like YouTube. Teresa, yeah. thank you so much. I know it's, I have grown a lot today listening to your well, story. Thank you. It's and been... your story is in my heart and I will carry it in my head for, for weeks and weeks and weeks to come. Thank you for sharing your story with Eric. We pray God's blessings on you, on that farmer husband and on your daughter as well. Thank you, Joey. It has been a joy, a true joy to be with you and with your audience. So. Thank you so much. God bless you, Thank Teresa. You. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.